tonight. He looked at me and he says, are you doing okay? And I said, I'm flipping. After a Tea Party drubbing, a senator from Alaska has a decision to make. Quit or fight back. To hell with politics. Let's do what's right for Alaska. Let's win! A look at an historic November battle between one Republican who is all about compromise when necessary and a Tea Party candidate who wants to send a message. I mean, you cannot sit back and call this a democratic problem. It's a compromise problem. And that compromise is destroying the nation. The pollsters who track politics will tell you that there is no group with a lower job approval rating than members of the United States Congress. At the end of last year, according to Gallup, only 13% of Americans believed Congress was doing a good job. That's a record low. Why the bad numbers? Americans say their Washington politicians are too ideological, too polarized, and they spend too much money. But what if there was a senator who won re-election without the backing of her party and now says she feels liberated to vote as she pleases, wants to compromise sometimes, and is beholden to no one except her constituents. Lisa Murkowski, a Republican senator from Alaska, says that's exactly what happened to her. This is the story of how the senator won re-election against great odds and became a different politician in the process. At Lisa Murkowski's swearing in last January, the look on Vice President Biden's face said it all. The odds of her being there were, according to experts, somewhere between slim and none. I do. Congratulations, Lisa. Thank you. Ms. Murkowski. In ceremonies and swearing ins throughout the day, hundreds of well wishers were there as Murkowski made history. Well, you know, Americans, whatever their political party, race, color, creed, or religion. They like a get-up fighter. Yeah. They love a comeback story. And yours is one now. Did you ever think you'd live this kind of comeback story? Nope. Nope. Uh, the thought of, of running a, a write-in um, has never even entered my mind. Oh. Made it. Uh, Most political experts believe Murkowski would be back in Alaska by now and that her office would be occupied by hard-right conservative Republican and Tea Party favorite Joe Miller. Murkowski was stunned in the primary by Miller, who was strongly supported by former Governor Sarah Palin. Miller's lifetime of achievement and personal accomplishment will make him a great U.S. Senator for Alaska. A graduate from... Miller graduated from West Point and Yale Law School. He had served in Iraq during the first Gulf War and then moved his family to Alaska in 1994, where he worked in a law firm and then became a district court judge. This is the kind of change that's going to carry over. not just A political conservative through and through, he had supported Palin's run for governor in 2006. But few in Alaska expected a relative unknown to pull off an upset in the primary, an upset that would reverberate across the country. After the primary, with the results becoming conclusive, Murkowski knew she had to place a phone call politicians hate to make, one conceding a race. I, I, I saw it. He was like, you've lost the primary, Lisa. You know, what are you going to do? And so I, I called uh, Mr. Miller and uh, told him that, you know, we're watching the absentees just as you are. Um, but they clearly are not trending my way, and it clearly appears that I have lost this primary election. And um, so I am, I am calling you to concede the election. And it was an interesting call because it had been, it had been pretty heated in the weeks prior to the, uh, the run-up to the primary. Um, and, and pretty aggressive battle there. Um, but there was no word of thanks. You did a good job. It was um, basically a call that said, you know, so how are you going to help me now? Did he actually ask you that? He did. He did. And, and I, I have to admit, I was, I was a little more than taken aback. 
because one, he didn't say, well, thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. Tough race, you ran a Thank you. You, you, you ran a good race, and um, you know, we'll, we'll move on here. None of that. Next day in the newspaper, uh, Mr. Miller was quoted as saying, I got a call from Lisa Murkowski um, and when she called to, to concede, and I offered my thanks and congratulated her. Which he had not done. Which he had not done. He clearly had not done. Question. Uh, if he had handled that telephone call differently, if he had handled it as most winning candidates do when the losing candidate calls to concede, is it possible you wouldn't have run? It might have made a difference. It might have made a difference. In an era of knockdown, drag out politics, Lisa Murkowski says she's more about civility and graciousness. And while the phone call was painful, the defeat was stunning. I think it took kind of everyone by surprise. At a popular coffee shop in Anchorage, we caught up with Steve Wachowski, who had been the senator's communications director during her campaign. He told us some of her supporters had voted for her opponent, not expecting him to actually win. I talked to a lot of Alaskans that would call and apologize to me, and they said, you know, I voted for Joe Miller just to send Lisa a message that I, I like her, but she's not conservative enough. And so he was singing, and he was singing. Lisa Murkowski has a history of not always being conservative enough for Alaska's voters, and this wasn't her first brush with near-death in politics. A born and bred Alaskan with five siblings, a slew of cousins and nieces and nephews, not to mention a husband and two sons now back in Washington, Lisa was first a lawyer in Anchorage before being elected to the Alaskan State House in Juneau in 1998. There, she voted to increase taxes on alcohol and came out against a bill to restrict abortion. Not popular moves in Alaska. In 2002, she fought off a primary challenge and won by only 57 votes. Hey, 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 pay tribute to Caesar. <laughs> then she was off to Washington, courtesy of her father, Senator Frank Murkowski. He appointed her in his place after he was elected governor of Alaska. Lisa served two years, ran again on her own, and won another six-year term. Frank Murkowski proved to be an unpopular governor, especially after he bought a multi-million dollar jet on the state dime. Lisa Murkowski's father was taken down in 2006 by Alaska's other famous female politician, Sarah Palin. This was the spirit that brought me to the governor's office when I took on the old politics as usual in Juneau. That luxury jet was over the top. I put it on eBay. On the small stage that is Alaska politics, the Palins and the Murkowskis are not exactly close. Well, here comes the question that you must have anticipated. Uh, Sarah Palin, former governor, mm -hmm. she has a definition of what a Republican is. Where do you stand vis-a-vis -vis, uh, former Governor Palin? Do you talk to her? Do you agree with her? Let's talk about it. We, we have not had that much communication since she left um, uh, Gov as governor. Um, while she was in office, um, we had a very professional working relationship. Uh, it's interesting, though, because there has been this effort, and, and I will blame the media, I will, I will, I will point the finger there, um, to, to suggest that there's some kind of bad blood or there's a family feud that goes on between the Palins and, and the Murkowskis. Uh, in, in fairness, there just is not. We just don't have that much interaction or, or have had that much of a previous relationship. But Murkowski has been quoted as saying that Sarah Palin was out for her own self-interest and not Alaska's. Palin has countered that Murkowski was just another Democrat in the Senate. She has now since moved on, and, and we don't have that professional relationship. Tea Party Americans, you're winning! While Sarah Palin was gaining national attention for the Tea Party, 
Lisa Murkowski was making a name for herself as a Republican who would reach across the aisle with seats on the Appropriations and Energy Committees. She was popular in a state that's all about oil. How liberal is Lisa Murkowski? She voted with but when the economy tanked, Alaskans were furious at Washington. The bank bailouts and Lisa Murkowski became a target. And at that same time, the Tea Party Express dumped about, and this is a, you know the outside Tea Party wing from California, um, had dumped $400,000 uh, into our race in like the last five days, included mailers, uh, radio ads, and TV. They, at, at a point, had outspent us four to one on our ads. They just went negative hard. And, and they harnessed that kind of anger that I think was so prevalent within kind of the Tea Party ranks or the people that supported the Tea Party. Good to see you, Wayne. Good to see you. But after the primary and Lisa's loss, a funny thing happened. People started coming out of the woodwork to urge her to run as a write-in candidate. Her cousin, Annie Gore, remembers one particular encounter at an Anchorage restaurant called Kenley's. I walked over and the first thing she sort of turned to me and she said, I got a standing ovation when I came into the restaurant. And I said, Ooh. well, that's cool. <laughs> okay. We sat down, waiter came over and he sort of looked at me and then he looked at Lisa and then he did a double take and he launched into this diatribe of, Senator, you have to run. You have to do this. This can't be the end of what your career was. You've done so much. And he just sort of went on and on. And, and I was thinking, can we order? I'm really hungry. <laughs> and he just sort of kept going on. Be not All those well-wishers urging her to do something don't, yeah, don't be a and that less than satisfying phone call with Joe Miller were having an impact. Murkowski and her family began seriously considering a write-in campaign, something the experts told her was impossible, according to her sister, Carol. At, th at the same time she's getting this encouragement from everyday people, the powers that be in Washington and in the Republican Party hierarchy saying, uh, you know, a write-in will not work. You can't win with a write-in. It's never it's n it'll never happen. You can't get the money. You can't. You a name like Murkowski. How are you going to teach people how to spell that? It's just not going to work. It could also be political suicide. If she split the vote and a Democrat won, the Republican Party would never forgive her. Finally, it came down to a fateful family dinner and a coin toss. So we sat down, had a lovely dinner, and um, talked about all the pros and cons, and the evening went on, and, and um, finally, you know, we're at the end of the evening, and I had to get on a very early morning plane to come back here to Washington, D.C. I said, no, we're not leaving. We're going to open up a bottle of champagne, and we're going to celebrate a decision. But we weren't getting anywhere, and no <laughs> decisions were being made. Nothing was happening. And Anne said, I've got a quarter. <laughs> So we flipped the, flipped the quarter, and I had it on my hand, and, and you I, wouldn't look. I couldn't bear to look, because we said, what is it going to be, Lisa, heads or tails? She said, if it's heads, I'm going to run. I was like, I can't look. I can't. And Carol pried my fingers up, and then she just put them down, and no, she didn't say anything, and she just smiled. Heads. And she said, it's heads. We looked around the table and said, well, I guess that must mean we're going. To hell with politics. Let's do what's right for Alaska. Let's win! With the flip of a coin, Murkowski had gone from being the Washington insider to the Alaskan upstart. That part of the story is next. If ever it can be said that a picture doesn't tell the whole story, then this would be a good example. Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas is all smiles congratulating Lisa Murkowski. Well, you did it with grace and... But Cornyn, head of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, unleashed his war chest, spending nearly $500,000 in advertising to defeat Murkowski. Well, that couldn't have made you feel very good. Well, no. But I knew that I was putting myself in a very unique position. I knew that I was putting my Republican colleagues in a very awkward position. And did I expect anything different? 
Um, I guess I did. I guess I did. It got so bad, Murkowski couldn't get a single political consulting firm in the lower 48 on board. And she only had six weeks between her announcement of the write-in and the election. That's when she went Alaskan, hiring an Anchorage firm to produce spots like these. To re-elect Lisa Murkowski, you must fill in the oval and write in her name. Murkowski, M-U-R-K-O-W-S-K-I. That is correct. It's time for a return to common sense. Time to return Lisa Murkowski to Washington. I'm Lisa Murkowski and I approve this message. And then the tide began to turn. Joe Miller bragged via Twitter that he needed to pick out office furniture in Washington. He hired security guards who handcuffed one reporter at a rally at a public school. And they handcuffed me, uh -huh. and then they called the police. Uh -huh. please. If you don't leave Show me right leave. now, yeah. I'm going to put you in handcuffs, okay. too. Uh -huh. And who are you? What's your name? You're trespassing, What's sir. What's your name? I don't, I'm not and you. threatened another reporter. Now. Miller blamed a novice political operation for the blunders, but his poll numbers continued to drop. You can ask me about background. You can ask me about personal issues. I'm not going to answer. <laughs> I'm not. Wow, what a good crowd. Wow. On November 2nd, Murkowski defeated Miller by 10,000 votes, thanks to a broad coalition of Democrats and independents like Sylvia Lang. She's an Alaskan kind of gal. I mean, she just she um, just went for it, and I salute that, frankly. And especially Alaska natives who turned out in force. I actually voted Republican for the very first time. No, last name. You want, oh, please. Oh. <laughs> you want me to spell it? Yes. We all had to. We all had to learn, yep. <laughs> As for Joe Miller, he's gone home to Fairbanks. But even after the wear and tear of an ugly campaign, he says he isn't giving up the cause. But this is why we did what we did. It's for their future. There's Miller no invited us over to meet his family and to see his impressive trophy collection. Uh, the doll sheep were all shot while I was a magistrate out in Toke. Um, that's the interior part of the state, about 90 miles from the Canadian border. This is a uh, mountain goat. I shot it outside of Ketchikan. And in a rare post-election interview, he said he may have missed his target this time around, but don't rule him out for another run. And Miller had a message for Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell. He needs to understand, though, uh, that the demands of the Tea Party are not just window dressing. We don't want to just see symbolic votes, but what we have to see is real action. There is power in the Senate amongst the Republicans to stop spending. The question is, do they have the backbone to do it? All right. I got it? Okay. All right. Miller says he has zero faith in Murkowski's ability to do it and thinks her re-election will only unleash her inner liberal. I think that she's gone even more to the left now. I think she feels that she's more liberated to act in a way that isn't consistent necessarily with what, you know, the fundamentals of the Republican Party would expect. Joe Miller, whom you def uh, eventually defeated, spoke to us and he said, and this is a paraphrase, but a pretty direct quote, mm -hmm. that a lot of people, like you, said he, wear the label of Republican who deep down are really, quote, big government types. Hmm. What do you think? Well, whose definition of Republican? Is it Joe Miller's definition of Republican? And to reach across the aisle on the eve of the so State you, of the Union address, she urged that. lawmakers to lay down their battle axes and mix it up. So maybe we do need to get out of our conventional skins every now and again and uh, come out and do something that indicates to the rest of the country that we're not afraid to sit next to one another. There are no cooties to be had Republican between uh, Democrats. But Miller and the Tea Party are in no mood for backslapping and compromise. It is the art of compromise, compromise on the growth of government, that has gotten Republicans into the same ship that the Democrats are in. I mean, you cannot sit back and call this a democratic problem. It's a compromise problem. And that compromise is destroying the nation. I firmly disagree. 
firmly disagree. Compromise does not mean you're giving up on your principles or your convictions. It means, it means being humble enough to recognize that others might also have something to contribute. And so let's allow for that contribution into the mix and build something that is good for everybody. So tonight I challenge you to join but me in the a internal vote. rift between By the establishment Republican Party and the Tea Party was in full display after the State of the Union when Congresswoman Michelle Bachman taped Obama's a separate direction. Tea Party message the to the Republican response. Astounding. Last November, you went to the polls and you voted out the big spending politicians. And you in your opinion, based on your experience, can the Republican Party hold itself together? Can it have unison? Or is it going to be a case of the Tea Party people who feel passionately about their positions uh, being in so much opposition that it, it tears the party apart? Help us out here. There clearly are some struggles as we try to figure out, is the Tea Party part of, of the Republican uh, Party? Is it, is it something that we want to encourage to stay away and be separate? How is there an integration if there is one at all? Is this better for the party? Do we need to be more moderate and inclusive in our views? That's where I happen to come from uh, in, in a perspective. I'm one who is a, is a big tent Republican. That's what I'd like to get us back to instead of this, this more narrow, um, narrow um, exclusive uh, well, Senator, party. What are the chances, you've made it very clear, you haven't left the party. No. You said, listen, I'm a Republican. But what are the chances is that you haven't left the party with the parties in the process of leaving you? Metaphorically, you know, that may, that may be the direction that things ultimately go. I don't feel that right now. I do feel that uh, there is a, a, a certain I hesitate to call it freedom, but for lack of a better term right now, an, an opportunity for me as a lawmaker, as a policymaker, to, to focus more on, on the, the, the wants and needs and desires of the people that I represent as opposed to kind of the strictures and the confines. Of, of a party. If you look at the most recent four votes that she made during the lame duck Congress, in fact, I think uh, she was the only Republican that voted for all of the four signal votes that came up just very recently. The Dream Act, the Tax Cut Compromise, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, you know, she was on the wrong side of, of the start vote from my perspective as well. And that was really reflective of what she was doing even prior to my involvement in this race. Are you going to go to the White House? Are you going to talk to President uh, Obama? I hope Have you so. done it already? I have not. I haven't been invited to the White you House you yet. you said you hope so. I hope so. But a showdown with the White House could be looming over oil, the lifeblood of Alaska's economy. The Obama administration has threatened to classify more of the state as wilderness, cutting it off from all drilling. And offshore drilling is already big in Cook Inlet, south of Anchorage, and the oil industry wants to go north to waters of the Arctic. The government leased rights to Conoco and Shell for more than $2 billion, but has so far refused to give the companies drilling permits. I want to come back to where you are now. You're, you're liberated. You can do anything you want to do. You have power. Uh, let's talk about the Energy Committee. Mm -hmm. Now, in your campaign, and I think you would be among the first to say, and if not, tell me, that it was key for you to get infusions of fairly heavy money at a critical time that you write in candidacy had very little chance unless you could get infusion money a lot of that money came uh, from energy companies oil companies not right? not in my right end no 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 um, what we saw uh, during the write-in campaign um, was a great deal of assistance from from Alaskans remember most people on the outside did not believe I had a snowball's chance in making this right in um, and so what we saw in terms of the dollars coming into to my campaign uh, my write-in campaign uh, was was a lot of, of Alaskan money but she has in the past received big money from big oil 
The record shows that the energy industry has been by far her largest contributor since Murkowski came to Washington. I don't know who it is that gives me money. I don't look at my FEC report to see, okay, has this person given me a donation and should I sit down with them? Or the reverse, this person has given me a donation, so I need to sit down with them. And I know that people think, well, of course, she must be doing that. She must do that. I don't do that. Lisa Murkowski has lived all over Alaska and still knows her way around a mountain. All the while, still talking about policy, even on the ski lift. But, but then it's, it's not just the outreach, it's then what you deliver back. It was eight degrees that day. You keep moving and nothing's too cold. The question is, which direction? In the race for the soul of the Republican Party, there are two women politicians in Alaska who see things very differently. While Lisa Murkowski has just been reelected to her job in Washington, Sarah Palin says she's not yet decided about running for the White House. If she should run and get the nomination, mm -hmm. as a Republican, you'd support her. Well, tell me who she's running against. Well, that leaves the open the question then. Well, I, I tell you, you know, and and, and again, people want to want to, to try to get me in a box and, and, and taking on Sarah Palin. Well, I'm trying and, as best I can. And, and, <laughs> and that's not my, my intention, is to take her on, um, not in any way. Uh, I respect uh, what she has, has done. She is clearly an individual who is able to, to, to motivate and to inspire people, um, not just in Alaska, but around the country. So I have no, no design to, to, to kind of bring her down or, or impugn her in any way. Um, but I, I really have not, uh, at at this point, made a decision as to who I will support for president at all, but um, but in, in the primary, I don't think it will be uh, Sarah Palin. Well, you said it would depend on against whom she might be running. A Palin versus Obama, where would you be? Mm. You are really making it tough for me. Should I say that we have proven that write-in campaigns can actually work? Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski. Straight ahead on our program, the Middle East. Understanding what's really going on. That's next. <laughs>